And I think you need to understand that if there is any counterparty credit risk at the at the too big to fail banks, that's one of the main reasons why the Fed stepped in in the first place, right? So in my humble opinion, and maybe I'm maybe there's a 0.01% chance I'm wrong. I can always be wrong. Oftentimes, when it comes to equities, I can be a lot more wrong than that. Um, but what I what I would think would happen is that you would have the full faith and guarantee of the United States government, right, to make sure those contracts are guaranteed. I mean, you had a company called AIG, which had horribly mismanaged risks, had no reason to be bailed out. But because Goldman was the counterparty in a lot of AIG's transactions, the government actually came out and bailed out AIG. Now, they didn't actually bail out the equity holders, right? You don't have to bail out the equity holders. You don't even have to bail out the subordinated bondholders and the bondholders. But when it comes to depositors and it comes to people honoring contracts, that those two things would have to break for your thesis to be right. And if you believe that, then you're right. Let me give you credit. If you believe that the Fed is going to let depositors lose all their money and is not going to honor these counterparty uh, credit risks, and these derivatives contracts are not offsetting, by the way. Most of these contracts are offsetting. It's not like everyone's taking a directional risk and there's like one insurance company taking all the risk. Then I, then I don't think it's going to happen. So let's talk in six months. If you're right, I will congratulate you publicly and I will apologize. And, you know, if, these, if, if, one of the, if one of the four big banks is gone or is entering receivership or needs to be nationalized, I will apologize. And I, I would be very sorry, um, but if I'm if I'm wrong, I hope you do the same. Uh, name redacted. I know you said to me you're a fan of both Jay and Kim, so I'd love you to jump in. Give us your thoughts. <laughs> yeah. um, I just wanted uh, since Jay brought up AIG, and um, uh, just just to talk about this uh, overall notional value of outstanding derivatives. It, you know, the last report I, I saw is it's, it is around like 600 trillion or so as of last year at some point. But that does not mean that the whole that whole bubble of derivatives can pop. It, it is very um, like specific, for instance, and we can use AIG as an example. And this is where I can sort of speak to what Jay's saying and to what Kim is saying. So if you AIG wrote around in, in 2008, they, they had written around 500 billion or so of credit default swaps across all assets. But it was their um, uh, like the, the collateralized uh, debt obligations uh, backed by, uh, you know, mortgage backed securities, uh, residential and um, commercial that had collapsed. So that how that worked, it was around 100 billion or so of that. And they, they could not make those payments to multiple banks. It wasn't even just Goldman. And that is where you have a massive contagion risk because they could not make those payments to Goldman, Deutsche Bank, you know, Credit Suisse, whoever. Uh, and in turn, these other banks, you know, Goldman, Credit Suisse, I mean, everyone had them. Every, you know, they basically could not, they have those hedged and swaps on with other banks. And that is what could cause a, you know, a, a, like a global type of uh, collapse. But um, so I don't think there's a huge overall bubble because so many of these uh, derivatives are spread out amongst different products like interest rate swaps, uh, FX swaps, equity uh, derivatives. It, it's, a, it's a huge market and one, one bust like AIG didn't mean the whole derivatives market popped. Having said that, uh, back to Kim's point, what we saw in 2008 and what we're seeing now is every time there's some sort of, you know, credit event or a Silicon Valley bank collapse, the market and then the Fed comes to some rescue of some sort, okay, bailing out depositors or backstopping or whatever word you want to say to that. Um, the market does get a little bit euphoric at first. And just like back during the financial crisis, that happened, but it is quickly sold into because there is fear of a broader contagion. And, you know, as the saying goes, when the tide comes in, you can see who's swimming naked. So my fear and to based on what Kim said uh, is what we don't know. And, and during the financial crisis, AIG sort of was like 
came in at the end and they didn't know about it. And that was the biggest risk to the global financial system. And if they didn't rescue AIG, the whole system would have collapsed. 100 percent. So and so uh, what Kim said, though, is is and, 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 and this is. No, this is just my opinion is what we don't know. And I do believe this. This is my opinion and I don't have any trades on. So I'm not talking my book. It's just an opinion is that, you know, I do agree with Kim. This is not over. And the Fed is sitting on mark to market losses of over a trillion dollars. So like their only solution would be to print money and rates are already higher. So I'm not sure if we have enough road left to kick the can down. And that that's my concern of what it is we don't know. And um, I, I would just my personal opinion and what I would personally do. And again, not even financial advice is I would just sell into these rallies, especially in the bank stocks, because it's just like you don't know. And there is more risk out. There are other institutions that took on more risk that we don't know about. And we're not even talking about right here. And name That's redacted, correct. that is the sensible thing to say. When you are in a market condition like this, you don't have people telling you to invest or to hold or not get your assets into a safe place. You know, that is irresponsible. And I'm doing the opposite of that. And one important thing that you just said is the derivative bubble is not just 173 billion over those four major US banks, it's over 600 trillion. And that is a super-sized casino where these banks and investors have made bets on all kinds of things. And here's the big problem. When the market crashes and we have a correction of 20-30% in the market, this entire derivative scheme is going to blow up and no one will have the liqui liquidity to cover those losses. It's game over, so not just for banks, for the markets and the governments as well a 20 30 percent correction in equities wouldn't would be nothing we are trading at all-time highs by the way no one here has said to, to buy any of these things i'm sure we're just trying to not create uh create fear but regardless the market is trading at all-time highs if you think about you know s p at four thousand, and you think about the fact that you know earnings could be as low as 200 you know you're at, you know, high teens, like 19 times earnings with rates where they are 5% and it's come down a little bit, you know, in the 80s, we were at seven times earnings. I don't think we'll get there.